United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea which is also referred as UNCLOSE. It is also known as UNCLOSE 3. UNCLOSE 2 failed to resolve many outstanding concerns in 1960. Discussions and negotiations continued until the third UN Conference on the Law of the Sea, UNCLOSE 3, in 1982, which tried to address most issues of concern. UNCLOSE 3 was the result of the third session of the United Nations Conference on the Law of the Sea, which took place between 1973 and 1982. It was adopted by the conference on 10 December, 1982. Entry into force, internationally, on 16 November, 1994. Unclosed lays down a comprehensive regime of law and order in the world's oceans and seas. It establishes rules governing all uses of the ocean and its resources. It also provides the framework for the development of a specific area of law, the sea. The Convention contains 446 articles group in seven parts in nine annexes. It is a lengthy document. Objectives of the UNCLOSE To facilitate international communication. To promote the peaceful uses of the seas and oceans. To promote equitable and efficient utilization of their ocean resources. Measures to conserve living resources. To study, protection and preservation of the marine environment. To promote maritime safety. Baseline as per unclose. Normal baseline for measuring the breadth of the territorial sea is the low water line, along the coast as marked on large scale charts officially recognized by the coastal state. Territorial waters as per unclose. The sovereignty of a coastal state extends beyond its land territory and internal waters and, in the case of an archipelagic state, its archipelagic waters, to an adjacent belt of sea, described as the territorial sea. This sovereignty extends to the airspace over the territorial sea as well as to its bed and subsoil. Every state has the right to establish the breadth of its territorial sea up to a limit not exceeding 12 nautical miles, measured from baselines determined in accordance with this convention. Submarines and other underwater vehicles. In the territorial sea, submarines and other underwater vehicles are required to navigate on the surface and to show their flag. Ships of foreign flag would have a right to innocent passage through the territorial waters. In a territorial sea, coastal state can exercise criminal jurisdiction on foreign flag vessels. Transit passage is allowed for ship, through the state. Coastal states can be suspend innocent passage in specific area if they conduct a weapon exercise. States can put laws concerning the safety of navigation, pollution prevention, uncontrolled fishing activities, customs, immigration, health and sanitary arrangements. Coastal state should not stop or divert a foreign ship passing through the territorial sea for the purpose of exercising civil jurisdiction in relation to a person on board the ship. Internal waters as per unclose. Waters that lies on the landward side of the baseline of the territorial sea form part of the internal waters of the state. Contiguous zone as per unclose. In a zone contiguous to its territorial sea. Described as the contiguous zone, the coastal state may exercise the control necessary to a. prevent infringement of its customs, fiscal, immigration or sanitary laws and regulations within its territory or territorial sea. b. punish infringement of the above laws and regulations committed within its territory or territorial sea. The contiguous zone may not extend beyond 24 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured. EZ as per unclose. Exclusive economic zone shall not extend beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured. 
in the exclusive economic zone, the coastal state has sovereign rights for the purpose of exploring and exploiting, conserving and managing the natural resources, whether living or non-living, of the waters superadjacent to the seabed and of the seabed and its subsoil, and with regard to other activities for the economic exploitation and exploration of the zone, such as the production of energy from the water, currents and winds. B. E. Jurisdiction as provided for in the relevant provisions of this convention with regard to 1. The establishment and use of artificial islands. Installations and structures. 2. Marine scientific research. 3. The protection and preservation of the marine environment. C. Other rights and duties provided for in this convention. 2. In exercising its rights and performing its duties under this convention in the exclusive economic zone, the coastal state shall have due regard to the rights and duties of other states and shall act in a manner compatible with the provisions of this convention. 3. The rights set out in this article with respect to the seabed and subsoil shall be exercised in accordance with Part 6. Article 19, Meaning of Innocent Passage. Passage is innocent so long as it is not prejudicial to the peace, good order or security of the coastal state. Such passage shall take place in conformity with this convention and with other rules of international law. Passage of a foreign ship shall be considered to be prejudicial, meaning of prejudicial is harmful or influencing people unfairly, to the peace, good orders or security of the coastal state if in the territorial sea it engages in any of the following activities. a. Any threat or use of force against the sovereignty, territorial integrity or political independence of the coastal state, or in any other manner in violation of the principles of international law embodied in the Charter of the United Nations b. Any exercise or practice with weapons of any kind. c. Any act aimed at collecting information to the prejudice of the defence or security of the coastal state. d. Any act of propaganda aimed at affecting the defence or security of the coastal state. e. The launching, landing or taking on board of any aircraft. f. The launching, landing or taking on board of any military device. g. The loading or unloading of any commodity currency or person contrary to the customs, fiscal, immigration or sanitary laws and regulations of the coastal state. h. Any act of willful and serious pollution. Contrary to this convention. i. Any fishing activities. j. The carrying out of research or survey activities. k. Any act aimed at interfering with any systems of communication or any other facilities or installations of the coastal state l. Any other activity not having a direct bearing on passage. Continental shelf as per unclose. Outer limits of the continental shelf on the seabed shall not exceed 350 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured or shall not exceed 100 nautical miles from the 2,500-metre isobath, which is a line connecting the depth of 2,500 metres. The coastal state exercises over the Continental Shelf Sovereign Rights for the purpose of exploring it and exploiting its natural resources. If the coastal state does not explore the continental shelf or exploit its natural resources, no one may undertake these activities without the express consent of the coastal state. Archipelagic State Archipelagic state means a state constituted wholly by one or more archipelagos and may include other islands. Archipelago means a group of islands, including parts of islands, interconnecting waters and other natural features which are so closely interrelated that such islands, waters and other natural features form an intrinsic geographical, economic and political entity or which historically have been regarded as such. Foreign nuclear-powered ships and ships carrying nuclear or other inherently dangerous or noxious substances shall, when exercising the right of innocent passage through the territorial sea, carry documents and observe special precautionary measures established for such ships by international agreements. High seas as per unclose. The high seas are open to all states, whether coastal or landlocked. 
freedom of the high seas is exercised under the conditions laid down by this convention and by other rules of international law. It comprises, inter alia, both for coastal and landlocked, states. a. Freedom of navigation. b. Freedom of overflight. c. Freedom to lay submarine cables and pipelines, subject to Part 6. d. Freedom to construct artificial islands and other installations permitted under international law, subject to Part 6. e. Freedom of fishing, subject to the conditions laid down in Section 2. F. Freedom of scientific research, subject to Part 6 and 13. These freedoms shall be exercised by all states with due regard for the interests of other states in their exercise of the freedom of the high seas, and also with due regard for the rights under this convention with respect to activities in the area. Article 91. Nationality of ships. Every state shall fix the conditions for the grant of its nationality to ships, for the registration of ships in its territory, and for the right to fly its flag. Ships have the nationality of the state whose flag they are entitled to fly. There must exist a genuine link between the state and the ship. Every state shall issue to ships to which it has granted the right to fly its flag documents to that effect. Article 92. Status of ships. Ships shall sail under the flag of one state only and, save in exceptional cases expressly provided for in international treaties or in this convention, shall be subject to its exclusive jurisdiction on the high seas. A ship may not change its flag during a voyage or while in a port of call, save in the case of a real transfer of ownership or change of registry. A ship which sails under the flags of two or more states, using them according to convenience, may not claim any of the nationalities in question with respect to any other state, and may be assimilated to a ship without nationality. Article 98. Duty to render assistance. Every state shall require the master of a ship flying its flag, in so far as he can do so without serious danger to the ship, the crew, or the passengers. a. To render assistance to any person found at sea in danger of being lost. b. To proceed with all possible speed to the rescue of persons in distress, if informed of their need of assistance, in so far as such action may reasonably be expected of him. c. After a collision, to render assistance to the other ship, its crew, and its passengers, and, where possible, to inform the other ship of the name of his own ship, its port of registry, and the nearest port at which it will call. Every coastal state shall promote the establishment, operation, and maintenance of an adequate and effective search and rescue service regarding safety on and over the sea, and, where circumstances so require, by way of mutual regional arrangements cooperate with neighboring states for this purpose. Article 90 for Duties of the Flag State 1. Every state shall effectively exercise its jurisdiction and control in administrative, technical and social matters over ships flying its flag. 2. In particular every state shall a. It maintain a register of ships containing the names and particulars of ships flying its flag, except those which are excluded from generally accepted international regulations on account of their small size, and b. Assume jurisdiction under its internal law over each ship flying its flag and its master, officers, and crew in respect of administrative, technical and social matters concerning the ship. 3. Every state shall take such measures for ships flying its flag as are necessary to ensure safety at sea with regard, inter alia, to a. The construction, equipment, and seaworthiness of ships. b. The manning of ships, labor conditions, and the training of crews, taking into account the applicable international instruments. c. The use of signals, the maintenance of communications and the prevention of collisions. For such measures shall include those necessary to ensure a. That each ship, before registration and thereafter at appropriate intervals, is surveyed by a qualified surveyor of ships, and has on board such charts, nautical publications, and navigational equipment and instruments as are appropriate for the safe navigation of the ship. b. That each ship is in the charge of a master and officer. b. That each ship is in the charge of a master and officers who possess appropriate qualifications, in particular in seamanship, navigation, communications, and marine engineering and that the crew is appropriate in qualification and numbers for the type, size, machinery, and equipment of the ship. c. That the master, officers, and, to the extent appropriate, the crew are fully conversant with and required to observe the applicable international regulations concerning the safety of life at sea, the prevention of collisions, the prevention, reduction, and control of marine pollution, and the maintenance of communications by radio. 5. In taking the measures called for in. Paragraphs 3 and for each state is required to conform to generally accepted international regulations, 
procedures and practices and to take any steps which may be necessary to secure their observance. 6. The state which has clear grounds to believe that proper jurisdiction and control with respect to a ship have not been exercised may report the facts to the flag state. Upon receiving such a report, the flag state shall investigate the matter and, if appropriate, take any action necessary to remedy the situation. 7. Each state shall cause an inquiry to be held by or before a suitably qualified person or persons into every marine casualty or incident of navigation on the high seas involving a ship flying its flag and causing loss of life or serious injury to nationals of another state or serious damage to ships or installations of another state or to the marine environment. The flag state and the other state shall cooperate in the conduct of any inquiry held by that other state into any such Marine Casualty or Incident of Navigation Article 101 Definition of Piracy Piracy consists of any of the following acts. a. Any illegal acts of violence or detention, or any act of depredation, committed for private ends by the crew or the passengers of a private ship or a private aircraft, and directed i. On the high seas, against another ship or aircraft, or against persons or property on board such ship or aircraft. 2. Against a ship, aircraft, persons or property in a place outside the jurisdiction of any state. b. Any act of voluntary participation in the operation of a ship or of an aircraft with knowledge of facts making it a pirate ship or aircraft. c. Any act of inciting or of intentionally facilitating an act described in subparagraph a or b. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe this video among your friends and colleagues. Join our Telegram channel for latest maritime updates and exams preparations.